The Chicago Bears ended up franchise tagging star defensive back Jalen Johnson, having a $19.8 million cap hit to keep him on the roster for another year and give Chicago another four months to negotiate a long-term deal with Johnson and his party. Sad that the sides couldn't get it done, but happy to have our Pro Bowl defensive back back to in order for next season. Along with that, the Chicago Bears traded for offensive guards in center Ryan Bates from the Buffalo Bills for a 2024 fifth round pick. After this move, the Chicago Bears now have $57.7 million, ninth out of the entire league in cap for this free agency period along with only having five total picks. This is a 99% sure thing that we are going to trade back either the number one or the number nine pick in this upcoming draft because we need to get talent on the cheapest contracts possible, which are rookie contracts. I'll save that video for tomorrow, though. Make sure you stay tuned for that. But let's go over what the Bears can do with the $57.7 in cap. Chicago has already done their big cuts over the last couple of weeks with Cody Whitehair and Eddie Jackson freeing up over $20 million. They obviously use that on Jalen Johnson. So the Bears don't have really any contracts that they'd be willing to use as cap cut money. And on top of that, they're going to have to put 12 to 14 million aside for their rookies when they draft them this upcoming offseason. So let's just say that leaves the Bears with about 43.7 million left for free agents. To be frank with you guys, 43.7 million sounds like a lot of money, which it is. But in the NFL world today, that's not that much. And that can maybe get you one big player to come to Chicago. But that's okay, because I have my eye on a few for sure free agents as of March 6, 2024, that I think the Bears can actually sign a few than just one big name that'll have the same amount of impact, if not even more. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Dick Brody, and as always, thank you for tuning in. Today, I am going to run through what I want to do with the $43.7 million left in cap and with the money put aside from rookies in order to improve this roster. So before I begin today's show, if you're happy that we kept Jalen Johnson on this roster and are happy about trading for center Ryan Bates, please like this video, comment what you would do with the $43.7 million, or just write bear down in the comment section below if you're excited for free agency. So today, the group I'm going to run through today are guys that I think will help the Chicago Bears get ready for a good price, along with that having connections to this team already and being around for a long time. Just a disclaimer, all these projections of these guys' contracts come from either Sports Illustrated or spotrack.com. So just putting that out there, these are not my projections, but these are from experts. So let's start with the first guy that I'm going to bring in is AJ Epinesa from the Buffalo Bills. The edge played for the Bills for the last couple of seasons under defensive coordinator Eric Washington, so keep that in mind. But the 25-year-old stands at 6'6", 260 pounds, had 20 total tackles last year with six and a half sacks, 10 quarterback hits, seven tackles for loss, eight pass deflections and two interceptions while being a second stringer, which is fantastic stats. If the Bears bring him into Chicago, he fills in the need of depth at the edge position. I think the Bears are going to use one of their first two picks on an edge rusher, likely the number nine. He's proven to get after quarterback pressure, causing a ton of ruckus in the backfield and absolutely being underrated in my opinion. And someone who knows Eric Washington's defense well, who can come in along with Tremaine Edmonds, who he played with as well, and be good mentors and leaders on this defense, whether he is a rotation player or not. I really think he could be a starter. He played under Washington last year in Buffalo and has had back-to-back -back six and a half sack seasons under Washington, which is big. He's also young at only 25 years old, low risk, high reward player, and has a projected contract of two years, 16 million. So about 8 million a year. I think that's a really good price in my opinion. He could boom this upcoming year and put him on a two-year contract where he's still young after if he does well and can get paid after. So after that, that leaves me with about 35.3 million left in cap. The second guy I'm going to talk about today bringing into Chicago that I think would have an impact is Geno Stone from the Baltimore Ravens. The 24-year-old is 5'11", 210 pounds, and had a monster year for the Ravens last year, helping lead them to the AFC Championship, almost to the Super Bowl, clearly. 68 total tackles, 7 interceptions for 101 return yards, and 9 pass deflections in 2023. A true ball hawk to put into the secondary, and a great replacement for Eddie Jackson for much less of the price. 
Clearly a strong player that can ball out young, fast, and great vision to make it a no-fly zone in Chicago. He right now is projected to get a three-year, $36 million contract. I will take that because he showed what he can do, has a lot of potential, will be working in Matt Eberfuss's very friendly secondary defense, an instant starter, an upgrade, and a cheaper replacement than Eddie Jackson, and also still leaves with money left on the table to go out and get more free agents. I really like Stone a lot. I think he's a strong player. I liked what he was doing in Baltimore. His breakout year definitely did not go unnoticed, and I think he'd be a fantastic addition for this secondary. After that, that leaves me with 23 points. 3 million left. The next guy I'm going to go with is wide receiver Tyler Boyd from the Cincinnati Bengals. Honestly, I'm shocked that he's hitting free agency, but you know, Cincinnati has such a steep wide receiver room. I can also see why the 29 year old stands at 6'2, 203 pounds, and had a pretty good year last year for being wide receiver three, which this guy used to be wide receiver one for the Bengals. He had 67 receptions for 667 yards, 10 yards per catch, and two touchdowns. His stats dipped because of a guy named Jamar Chase came to town as Boyd used to be a thousand yard receiver every single year for his first four years. He's a big body wide receiver to replace Equinamia St. Brown, but also as a good mentor for if we do bring in a young, tall rookie wide receiver in the draft, wink, wink, Marvin Harrison Jr. He's a blocker downfield as well, which would be great on the run and a red zone target. I really like this because he's only projected at a two year, $11 million dollar contract, which I, I was shocked Sports Illustrated put that out there. And I'm again, I'm going off of what the experts are saying, but I'll take that. I mean, I think that's a total steal for a veteran like him, definitely more than Equinamia St. Brown. But overall, a guy that can get you 600 yards and be your wide receiver three and also six two, why not? A two year, $11 million contract. That would leave me with still 17.8 million left. And I'm getting a guy that was once a captain, once a thousand yard receiver and a good player. Now, before I get into my final three guys, yes, with 17.8, I still got three more guys on the board. If you please could hit that subscribe button on this video to help me get to 14,000 before March 13th, the beginning of free agency, that would be greatly appreciated. Huge before free agency. And I can't appreciate your guys' support enough. I'm only about 260 away. Would love to hit that before the weekend. Thank you guys in advance. So let's go to my next guy, DeAndre Swift, running back from the Philadelphia Eagles. The 25-year-old stands at 5'9", 215 pounds, and had his first career 1,000-yard season last year with the Eagles with 1,049 rushing yards, a 4.6 yard per carry average, and five rushing touchdowns. The speedy back has crazy agility, but also can block, which is what we need in that running back room at the moment. He's also very versatile, can also be a wide receiver out of the backfield and rip it up. I think we need a young vet back again like Deontay Foreman for a little bit cheaper of a cost and also on a multiple year contract because this is Khalil Herbert's last year. Rashawn Johnson still needs a mentor overall and the Bears can go out and get a running back next year too. But it just makes the backfield dangerous at all times. When your running back three is potentially Rashawn Johnson, that's a great problem to have. He's projected to also get a two-year seven a fourteen million dollar contract, which you know seven million a season. You know for a running back, that's a little expensive, but I would pay it because that still leaves me with about ten point eight million left. Then I have returning guy Josh Blackwell, defensive back, was with the Bears the last two seasons. Only twenty four years old, 5'11", 180 pounds. It runs a four point three forty time. He is a special teams guru. Eight tackles on special teams this last year with a forced fumble. I mean. We needed a guy like DeAndre Houston Carson to be on the Bears for the next 10 years, and I really think Blackwell is that guy. He's a great depth piece also for the defense. He steps up when needed. I mean, when he was covering Devontae Adams two years ago as a rookie in Chicago against the Packers, he did a fantastic job with two pass deflections against him. I think he's going to be great on this team for a year, a projected one-year, $1.2 million contract, and that still leaves me with $9.6 million left. And with that $9.6 million, I'm going to let you guys choose who you want to bring in. I think that's enough money to bring in a guy that could be impactful, but also you have to consider it could be a couple more depth pieces. But And then also Patrick Scales will definitely be in there. He's like a $1 million guy. But let's let's just say you have $9.6 million left. Who are you guys choosing? Would love to hear it. But with that, thank you as always for tuning in this episode of Just Another Year of Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde, and as always, bear down, baby.